Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 28th, 2023. Well, my goodness, as we're winding down this quarter, we had a little bit of inspiration yesterday in those economic reports, but as the, we rally back up, we've got some resistance above to be considering in the Diamonds and IWM, while the QQQ and SPY look pretty darn bullish. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a peek at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, we had a nice little surge in the diamonds yesterday on those economic reports that came in better than expected. But, you know, we have to consider that that may be a double-edged sword. And what I mean by that is that could also inspire the hawkish Fed to continue to raise those rates in the market, slowing the economy down because we continue to see this um, a very resilient um, situation here in the market where folks continue to spend, even though they're running their debt levels really high, they're continuing to spend, 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 spend. There's no slowdown here for the Fed. In fact, I think there may even be um, a little hint in some of this data that the core PCE number on Friday could have actually gone up. And if that were the case, if the core PCE number goes up, well, that's going to make the Fed likely more hawkish. So be kind of careful. Go ahead and celebrate. But at the same time, we might want to be considering what happens next if that inflation is not coming down as the Fed would like to see. Now, taking a look here at the diamonds, we've got this uh, nice push up here. We're pushing right back up here into this price resistance level of the chart. So if the bulls can continue to show that uh, that energy here today, then I would look for an area right up in here to see if we can push up into that and uh, possibly break through that area again. Remember, once you lose a price support, that becomes a critical level to pay attention to because we could rally back to that. That could actually create the lower high if it were to fail there. Not saying that's going to be the case, but that's the thing that we've got to be watching for. Now, if the bulls can cross through there, that solves a lot of those problems um, initially, but then we run that same risk that we rally to this resistance, which we have struggled with for so long in this chart, and see whether or not we can break through that level. Now, if the bears were to find inspiration today, well, the only place we can really look is right in here. There's a little bit of little bit of price support right in here if the bears were to engage today. If that were to break, then I'm going to suggest we're going to come right back down here and retest this low. If we take a look at our SPY, very similar situation here in the SPY where we're holding a nice price support in the chart. We do have a little bit of resistance. You guys know I talked about this yesterday, kind of tying right through this area of the chart. And if we can push up through there, then there's no reason to believe that we can't push on through and retest these highs up here here if those bulls can continue to engage. Now, we um, once again, we enjoyed a pretty good rally in the big techs yesterday, and that helped lift these in the SPY and the QQQ by and large more than any other, those tech giants. So we'll want to keep an eye on those. If they start to slip, that's where we could run into some problems. Now, if the bears were to find inspiration today, well, then I'm going to suggest that we're going to come back and maybe even test that support again in the chart. If that were to fail, then once again, I think we're back down here, possibly testing that support and maybe even trend here in the chart. And by the way, that wouldn't be a bad thing because we're still miles and miles away from our 50 day moving average, showing that overbought condition still exists here in the SPY. And speaking of overbought, QQQ remains very overbought as well, really stretched out 
in that chart. And if those bulls can continue to push it, um, this up, I'm going to suggest maybe a resistance right in here might be the place I'd be watching. Notice we've kind of got these wicks up here, these high points in these charts. So somewhere in that range, I'd look for a little bit of price resistance. If they can push through that though, there's no reason to believe that we can't push right up in and retest these highs in the QQQ. Now remember, we run that same potential problem here. If we were to create a lower high, then we start looking back down toward those next levels of support. So if the bears find inspiration, I'm going to suggest maybe a pullback right into here. You can see we've got a little bit of price support in that chart right there. And if that does not hold, then I'm going to suggest we're going to retest this low here in the chart and then possibly down toward that trending level. Remember, none of that in the SPY or the QQQ creates a bearish condition or even changes the bullish trend in these charts. If we take a look at IWM, IWM had a good solid rally yesterday pushing back up, but we have to remember, here's that problem again, we break a price support, and if we rally back to it and we're unable to break through, well, that creates the lower high. So watch that carefully here today. If the bulls can continue to find inspiration, we need to see them break through this level up here. If they can break through and hold that level, then here we go. Right back up to test that resistance level in the chart. So watch carefully for that. If the bears were to find inspiration, well, there is a little bit of price support, as you can see right here, a little tiny bit of price support. So if we pulled back into there, no harm, no foul on the on the day. But if that were to break, then the only place we can really go is right back down here to retest this level of price support. And of course, breaking down from there, things might get a little bit on the serious side. So we'll want to keep a close eye on that particularly if we fail these resistance levels in the chart. Let's take a look at our uh, VIX. Well, doggone it, the VIX continues to be pretty erratic in what it's showing, but yesterday, the day before yesterday and today was more of a normalized move that we would see in the VIX. We pulled back on that rally here in the market, um, giving um, that sense that the fear that we created on Tuesday kind of dissipated yesterday and moving back down. Now the question is going to be, can the bulls follow through with that, continuing to bring this down? Will we find a little price support here or will we push on through with a big bullish move showing price support in this area or even breaking that? If the bulls were to find inspiration today and push back up, finding a little bit of support in this area, well, let's look for that resistance up in this area. And if we pop through there, well, you can see exactly where we're going to go to that next resistance level above. If we take a look at our T2122, this was a little bit on the disturbing side, considering how far we actually moved yesterday in those charts. There were good point moves in the charts, but we really didn't we really didn't overcome the pullback of the of last week um, in any big measure. And if we look at T2122, it's telling us that we're already pushing back up into a bearish reversal zone. So this is the bearish reversal zone and we pushed up here pretty hard yesterday. So if we were to pop this morning or get some bullish inspiration, just kind of keep in mind, we don't have a whole lot of room to go. Grow, go in that upside move before we reach that um, extreme overbought in T2122. Now, and that opens up that opportunity that if we catch that reversal here in the market, well, we've opened up a pretty big opportunity to the downside. And I shouldn't have drawn it that way. It should be more on this way, up this way and down from here would be that potential in the market. If we take a look at our 
T2108. Well, you got to give this up to the bulls. It was a nice move the last couple of days in the uh, T2108. We pushed off of this price support, but we want to keep in mind that we're pressing into a little bit of price resistance here in the chart. Doesn't mean we can't push right on through there if we get enough bullish in information in the market, but it also warns us that we should be watching that maybe we kind of went too far too fast and that we might get that reaction back down here soon. Soon. So just be a little bit careful. Remember, we're going into the end of quarter. We could have some window dressing that helps out those bulls quite a bit, pushing things up. But we also have that complication of a pending holiday and the chances that we could see um, traders kind of heading out early for to extend the holiday here um, as we wind down this week so don't be surprised if volumes begin to decline and then of course we also have that same thing coming up we have those worries about next earning season and will next earning season be as productive as we had hoped and last but not least we have another report coming out here today at the end of the day that could be very interesting to pay attention to and that's going to be the bank stress test results after the bell today will be coming out so that could also be significant and change everything it could inspire the bulls or the bears now keeping that in mind um, let's take a look at our T2107. Our T2107 also got to give this one to the bulls. Bounced right off of that support. That was a great move back up 48, 49% of the stocks above their 200-day uh, moving average. But yeah, we still have a resistance up here that we have to be thinking about as well. Um, so watch that closely on the day. And then interestingly enough, T2101 um, hooked again. So um, where we feel like, oh my gosh, we get this nice bullish move going and everything and momentum's picking up. Well, um, that absolute breadth continued to um, or reversed again, pulling back, showing that that momentum shift could easily come again. So um, does that mean that that momentum shift is going to turn to a bearish site? I don't know that but let's watch that closely, our momentum dropping off here a little bit. And it, it may just be that signal that we're kind of lightening up on our positions heading into that next holiday shutdown here in the market that I suspect a lot of traders will just extend into long four day weekends and maybe even five day weekends if they head out on Friday. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today and our economic calendar um, does have a few things we'll want to be paying attention to uh, mortgage applications already came in and they came in better than expected um, moving on up showing that growth and we saw that yesterday in those housing numbers housing sales spurring those um, higher uh, looking good and what's interesting is while that's going on we're continuing to see our bond rates increase as a matter of fact our bonds are not helping us at all pushing those interest rates higher for any of those buyers in mortgages. So kind of an interesting circumstance here and it may show that the market is hotter than the Fed would like to see it. It's kind of an odd situation seeing rates going up, rates getting very, very high, and yet we still can't buy up housing fast enough. That's not a situation that the Fed is likely going to appreciate. Now, if we look on through here, we've got international trading goods. That's expected to come in at a, a strongly negative number, but they are looking for an improvement over the past negative number. We've got retail inventories, wholesale inventories, and then I don't know what Jerome's going to have to say, but um, we always know that he has that ability to move the market with every word he says, so pay attention to that. We've got uh, petroleum status here uh, coming up. Um, we're seeing some pretty interesting price moves in um, oil sector stocks. Um, a lot of worry about what's happening over there in China and demand on energy, so watch that closely. And then we've got some bond auctions here to be paying attention to. Kind of keep in mind, as soon as we kind of get through some of these big data points, well, the market's likely going to be pretty heavily focused on what comes next in the GDP and the jobless claims, watching that for Thursday morning. So kind of keep that in mind. If we take a look at our earnings calendar, we have a little bit more going on on our earnings calendar today to be paying attention to. I've got a few more 
to um, put on that list today. First off, we're going to hear from um, BlackBerry. We'll want to be watching that one today. It looks like they're trying to move just a little bit higher in the pre-market on that earnings report. We've got General Mills, which is obviously going sharply the other direction on its earnings report here today. So General Mills not looking so happy. We've got the Fuller Company in here uh, that will be reporting. I don't see any price action moves in the pre-market on that just yet. We've got uh, KFY that will be reporting today. Um, one of the most notable, I think, will be after the bell today with Micron. Micron's one of those companies that seems to be very direct in its earnings reports and can give some clues about how tech might report in the next quarter. So keep an eye on that one. MU, pretty interesting um, uh, interesting report today. And then we've got um, Fizz. We've got National Beverage Company going to be reporting today. We've been seeing a lot of um, ugliness, really, in some of these defensive sector stocks. So um, watch that one closely. And last but not least, we got WOR getting a nice little pop and drop here in the pre-market. We're popping up here, challenging that resistance and pulling back in the pre-market. But the trend looks very, very good. And steel, um, uh, one of those commodity things that we'll want to be paying attention to. Because if we're going to be bullish in the market, we're definitely going to need these commodity prices to start picking back up. Let's take a look at a few stocks setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click the bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could please also do me that favor, clicking those thumbs up buttons, leave them a, leaving a brief comment, even an emoji um, counts. Um, so I really, really appreciate everyone who takes the time to do that, supporting the effort that it takes to put these videos out. Thank you so much. It means, means an awful lot to me. And I do try to get through and answer those comments. And um, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. I do appreciate it. Let's take a look at um, some stock setting up. And remember, guys, these aren't recommendations to buy or sell any security. Make sure you're following your own trading rules. Make sure you're following your own risk tolerances. You should never, ever blindly follow someone else's trade ideas. Let's take a look at a few things setting up in here. First, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar started up yesterday, started to weaken, and this morning we're trying to pop back up. So when that occurs, we start running into that situation here where we have a little bit of that uncertainty um, potentially coming in um, where that can affect those commodity prices um, overall in the market. So let's keep a close eye on that if that does continue to um, um, show us that upside move that could weaken those commodity prices. If it does weaken, that should encourage those commodity prices higher. And in saying that, let's take a look at U.S. Steel. The U.S. Steel, um, I mentioned that I'm in this position, so I have a bias on this. I've already closed three quarters of the of the trade, taking a nice profit on that position and actually hedged with some short strikes on this position. So what I'm looking for in this chart after this nice move is maybe a little rest or pullback in here that follows this trend. You could look for the next entry into that position or continue to hold for that upside move. Let's take a look at um, Steel Dynamics. Steel Dynamics also moving nicely in that upside move, pushing up off of that support, looking good now, clearly, Quite a little bit of resistance up here to be considering in steel dynamics, but still moving well. And you can see CLF, CLF, another steel stock moving pretty good. Um, so I would keep an eye on a few of those steel stocks out there. If we take a look um, at some other commodities out there, take a look at FCX. Now, FCX was kind of a disappointment to me the other day. I picked up a position in here, and although this was an early entry because of the downtrend and resistance above, um, it 
it gapped lower. It didn't quite trip my stop because I had I gave it some room here in that trade. Boy, we surged right back up to that resistance up here. So watch that carefully. If we after this big surge back up, if we can rest right in this area, there still may be some opportunity in here for that to perk up, particularly if that dollar weakens. So watch that carefully. We're certainly going to need a lot of copper if we're going to be putting everybody in electric vehicles and stringing enough charging stations around the country we're going to need to dig up some country to provide enough copper to do that right now we have massive shortages on copper so watch that closely it's going to have to come around and then scco would be another one to be paying attention to southern copper um, nice little resistance level up here to be challenging that stock but you can see that uptrend starting to move other places that you might want to look saw some pretty good moves here recently in some retail a little bit surprising to me but on the housing side of things retail has been very very strong um, in in that housing sector because we're seeing those housing prices and builders just go up and up and up so home depot really stretching up here now i would wait right now we're pushing into this resistance we could pull back here soon or we could pop through and then rest in that chart so i wouldn't chase this but home depot looking pretty good here you might want to take a look at lowe's as well stretching on through and yesterday Yesterday, breaking through a massive level of price resistance here in the chart if that can hold up here if that can prove to hold this as support then we would look for that uh, next upside opportunity somewhere along that trend so some pretty good charts there also saw some um, other places here in the market that tried to move down but got a nice little reversal here yesterday and that would be again on that commodity side of things um, uh, basic materials um, ag here in that position so um, if the dollar is going to weaken watch this area in here and you can see a very price a price alert on this chart looking to see if that's going to turn and maybe head back to the upside here on cf that would be a beautiful break of the downtrend here and as you can see there's an inverted head and shoulders pattern in here that's performing and we'd be looking for that next potential move to extend that to the upside this is also what we call a possible rounded bottom breakout pattern that's usually a very very productive pattern so keep an eye on that um, i'm going to also put paypal on that list nice little resting pullback in that chart you know i've been watching this if this um um, rest here a little bit more today i think i'll move my alert down tighter probably right in here looking for that next opportunity for that to pop and again if the market's going to be bullish then we're going to need these pay systems to be picking picking up because consumers are going to be using these pay systems very heavily on all their online shopping so watch those closely so with that guys hey i want to wish you all a fantastic day wish you very good results in your trading be careful be safe remember we've got a lot of uncertainty ahead of us heading into this holiday so plan your trading carefully i wish you all the best and i'll see you right back here bright and early thursday morning take care everyone